Mom stole $30,000 from me by exploiting a joint account loophole, and now I face a tangled legal battle to reclaim my savings. Last night, I checked my bank account to see that my mom had stolen about 30k USD from my savings account. The withdrawal showed up on my end as miscellaneous debit. My mom had stolen it last week and I didn't notice until today, due to the fact that I only check my bank account around once a week. If you're wondering why I don't check more often it's just because my dad allows me to use his credit card for groceries while I'm in college and I only ever buy groceries for myself. The only time I check my bank account is when I have to pay for some expense, bills, etc. My mom and I have not spoken in more than a year due to reasons that aren't really important. I'm just emphasizing that we do not have a relationship. My dad also does not speak to her only through lawyers. When I first left her house at 18, my mom gave me nothing, withholding my birth certificate slash ID slash etc. I had to painstakingly replace everything. I finally was able to find a bank where I could open an account with the forms of ID I could provide. I went to the bank alone and opened a bank account that bank account was opened by me, I was the only one who signed for it, and not even my dad had any access to it whatsoever, of course, since I'm an adult. Fast forward to today, when I called the bank after seeing all the money from my savings account gone. This money I had saved up over the span of around a year, where my dad paid me generously while working for him. The bank revealed that it was my mom who took the money. The bank told me that my mom was a signer on my own bank account, and that my bank account was actually a joint account. This was a revelation to me, as I opened this account on my own I don't even know how my mom knew my savings account number, because again, I have not spoken to her in over a year. They told me for this reason, they could not file a DISP, was owned by my mom and I. They told me unfortunately because of that nothing she did was illegal and I really couldn't do anything to get my money back. The reason why I didn't question anything was when I logged into the mobile portal they have, both the checking and savings account showed up, making me think that I had opened both when I had gone to the bank to open my checking. I was depositing money into the savings account with both my mom and I on it this whole time and she was watching it build up so she could just take it all away. I'm disappointed but there's nothing I can really do. I'm just blaming myself a lot but like I said in the original post, I'm certainly not struggling with money and so I'm blessed in that way. My dad has been really caring and supportive during this, telling me that it wasn't my fault and that she knew it was my money, so she shouldn't have touched it. This is all just a learning lesson I'm definitely not making this mistake again. I think my dad blames himself for what happened because my mom became really bitter after their divorce. He offered to repay me all of the money on my mom's behalf but I can't take that from him. It'll all come back eventually, Ute, but that I'd have to go to my local branch, which is not local anymore, since I moved away for college, to fix the problem, as they were the ones who transferred the money. Of course I was just floored and confused, and asked how a joint account is made. They said that for a joint account to be created, both people must be present. I went and made my account alone. I, of course, am going to have to follow all the steps after this going to the original branch to see what happened, talking to the manager, closing the account, and I'm going to be switching banks altogether while this is being investigated. Can someone please tell me how my mom was able to do this? Was it a mistake on my end? How likely is it that I can get my money back? Edit to add some information, my mom is a very powerful woman and she's done things that are worse than this. I can't help but feel defeated already because she probably found a legal loophole. Edit, this post has gotten so much bigger than I thought it would. I have taken some of your advice and I talked to my dad about possibly using his legal team for this, which I was planning on doing anyways. My dad of course agreed right away and told me not to take any action quite yet before we talk to the lawyers and take a look at all of the physical paperwork from the bank. I will post an update in the near future about the conclusion of my predicament. Thank you all so much for the great advice and please wish me luck. I'm really gonna need it frown I'll make a master post explaining everything that happens when it's all over. Relevant comments, including more comments than you would usually see in these posts because a lot is clarified in the op comments. Some are quite long. Oop random comment I have this set up. I get text messages whenever I spend more than $100. But it was all quiet on the western front when 32k was taken from my savings lol. Thank you. Reader comment sounds like you messed up. I don't know how you wouldn't know. W you have a joint account. Those are not easy to set up oop response because I didn't set up a joint account. I promise you lol. I went to the bank and asked to open a single account. I was the only one present and my account was created by the time I left. There was no weird online stuff, it was very straightforward. Reader comment nobody can tell you, and the bank won't, how she impersonated you. File a police report. Contact the bank and give them the number and escalate it to the fraud department file a CFPB complaint if the bank won't help you. This is criminal theft, fraud, and identity theft. Oop, thank you. I'll be sure to do all of the above. This is such an overwhelming revelation response to oops post above I would also take a look at your most recent bank statement, either the printed copy that they send or it may also be available online. It should show the registration on the account. If your mom's name is on there, then it is a joint account. If it is not, I would ask the bank for the legal registration on the account. For example, for a joint account, you might see something like, your name, mom's, address if you just see your name, I would challenge the bank to prove to you that it is legally a joint account. I am sorry this happened to you, it is the ultimate betrayal for a parent. Oops so, I just checked my bank statements and they do have my mom's name on them. These are my e-statements and I've received statements in the mail before, and I'm going to dig them back up because there's no way I wouldn't have noticed my mom's name on them, too. But that still leaves the question I went to the bank alone and opened my account alone. 
It is impossible to create a joint account with another person unless they are present to my knowledge, at least. I was over 18 at the time, as well. I feel like an idiot. How can this be possible? Comment Does your mother also have her own account or prior relationship with this bank? It's not uncommon for people like her T. Leverage that to access your account. Although it's hard to see how she could have been added and the account changed to joint. Get all the account opening documents from your father and review every single statement and form on file. Check if her name is on everything. Edit, you also need to open an account with another separate bank and transfer what remains to there. Oop, thank you for voicing this out loud because this is exactly what I was thinking my mom, like I said in the post, is a super powerful person, and has a relationship with this bank. A close relationship but to be honest, she has a close relationship with every bank in town. When I walked in, everyone there knew I was her daughter. I just didn't want to put it in the post because I didn't want to dive into conspiracies. I'm going to do this ASAP, and hopefully try to get my dad to send me photos of the documents at the house. I am currently in the process of opening a new account with a different bank. It's not the money that she necessarily wants, she just wants to hurt me. My mom still takes 50% of my dad's income for child support every month even though she makes so much, I'm not sure if it's more or less than my dad though. My aunt is constantly coming to me complaining that she won't give her any money even though she supposedly makes a million dollars a week or something like that. I have no idea how much my mom actually makes. Comment I would almost wonder if she caught wind of your new account, rushed to a branch and said she was a cosigner but got stuck in traffic. Since it's a smaller bank they may be more trusting. Then she just waited her time and withdrew when she really needed it or after she saw it build up. Who knows, just throwing out an idea. Sounds like you really need to get with a higher up branch manager and ask questions. Oop I'm a bit heartbroken right now because I agree with the second half of your statement. It is completely possible that my mom was a cosigner C. It's the earlier days of me owning this account and she just watched my money build up until she could take it all away. I have no idea why I wouldn't have been alerted about this, but yeah. I need to see a branch manager. Comment here is what I would suggest. A. How old were you when you opened the account? In most states you have to be 18 and in Alabama for some godforsaken reason you have to be 19, even for a savings account, so was it ever your sole account? It's weird that no one would open an account for you, and then magically this bank would. That's not usually how banks work. They have regulations to follow and know your customer obligations and require certain forms of ID for a reason. So it's odd that this bank wouldn't. Makes me wonder if they knew your mom and thought they were doing you a favor by taking your application in two steps, still not okay and I whoop report, B, ask for a copy, or see if they are online, of all statements from the time of opening. If she was a joint owner, her name should have been on the statements from the beginning. If not, see when it appears. C. Ask for copies of all account opening documents and any document evidencing changing to account ownership or management. You want copies of account histories and notes including copies of all correspondence with account owners, including any notes slash records of phone calls, you won't get tapes, to which you are entitled under your account agreement and regulation. You want to show A. That she wasn't with you when you signed the forms that day and or B. That she was added much later D. After you get all that, figure out if any when they let your mom wheedle her way in. Then you make a claim for a fraudulent transfer of funds under Reg E due to bank error slash facilitation of fraud. Keep mentioning how the bank facilitated the fraud. But only if they did. Otherwise you look crazy, E, if they stonewall you or push back, send the same complaint with the evidence to their regulator. It, S small so it's probably the FDIC, but why not copy and paste to the CFPB too just for fun? Oop response A, I live in California and was 19 when I opened the account. And yes, it was always my sole account. I see how the valid form of ID thing is confusing. Let me clarify. My mom withheld from me my birth certificate, passport, SSN, and other documents I can't think of right now. She did give me my driver's license though, thank God she did because I'd have been screwed worse. A lot of the banks I visited had the usual policy, primary ID and secondary ID. I did not have both. However, the bank I bank with, and this is on their official website, only requires your SSN number, your ID, and your address. B. I have paid attention to all of my statements since I've gotten them in the mail, and none of them had her name on them, that I remember. I don't have access to them right now due to me being out of town for school and my dad and stepmom being on vacation. I'm going to try and see if I can fish them back up and see when they appeared. And if they appear, see, we'll be sure to do this D, we'll be sure to do this too. Lol E, thanks. I'll be sure to send to both. Comment to post above just so you know, your birth certificate, passport, and social security card legally belong to you not your mother. By withholding them from you when you became an adult, she committed multiple crimes. You can also show up to her house with the cops to get your SS card and birth certificate because that is technically yours and she is committing a crime keeping them from you. Oop response I was considering doing that a long time ago before I got everything replaced, however I was still raw at the time and didn't want to stir the pot any further. I might do that now. Comment this is so close to a prior post on here, I credit AI with the story and theft. Oop response I promise you this is happening to me real time frown I don't even know how to use AI. Can you link me to the prior post? I'd L. Ove to read some of the comments to maybe gain further insight. Comment response of course the prior threads I've read over the years are numerous and I cannot. Because I grew up with parents who were not financially predatory, stories like yours are unbelievable. Your writing felt a certain way to me, honestly. Oop response oh. That's alright. 
I hope you have a good day oop comment my mom hires private investigators to know everything about my life and my dad's life. My dad has several properties in different places that she is always trying to repossess or take for herself. It's a long shot, but maybe this is how she knew? I don't even know what private investigators are capable of finding. I have no idea what banks she uses, but I'm fairly certain she uses Chase. I wrote in a previous comment that my mom has close relationships with every local bank, however, as she's a very prominent businesswoman. If there's anything I can provide for more insight please let me know. No, there was no abuse fortunately. I'd say it's just poor character on my mom's behalf. She's really greedy when it comes to money and would buy herself five pairs of designer boots while my siblings and I had holes in our clothes. We lived in a really big house in a really nice neighborhood so nobody would really think anything is out of place. Anyways, that's just some stuff that kept me away from her. The reason I left in the first place was I was seeing a boy she didn't approve of so she sent me to boarding school for 15 months and I left her house when I came back. It just always felt like she was trying to get rid of me since I was a problem. She's doing all of this now because I think she resents that I'm not struggling living with my dad. I'm very privileged and get by fine, but she just wants my dad and I to struggle. She's always asking for more and more money from my dad, not because she needs it, but she just wants to make my dad suffer. My parents had a messy divorce, if it was, that's an obvious lol. I don't think I would ever file a restraining order but this might be grounds to do so. I'm just hesitant to take action because my siblings live with her, all underage, and I won't be able to contact them. She still keeps them away from me. I still love my mom and cry over her I just wish she wouldn't do all this. I'd still talk to her, even, but she's making it hard. I just love her and don't want any of this to be real. Comment I can't help but to have a lot of questions irrelevant to the reason you posted. Namely, if your mother is powerful, why does she need to steal money from her son? And even more so, why would she take this kind of risk? Oop response to post above hi. I'm actually her daughter. Yes so growing up I never really understood or knew that my parents were wealthy. I went to private schools my whole life so everyone around me was raised in similar environments. She is powerful simply because of how wealthy she is. I didn't realize how wealthy we were until I went back to visit my private elementary school and saw that there was a plaque with my mom's name on it because she paid for the whole damn thing, her shiny white glass office versus my dad's simple one, seeing her on TV sometimes, spontaneous trips to Paris for some reason, etc. I'm not going to say her occupation due to the fact it might be easy to find her if I say. You might see either in the post or another comment, I can't remember as I write this, I explain that I left her house after she started treating me badly when she found out I was dating someone she didn't approve of, poor. Year and a half of boarding school, still not getting along when I got back, and I ended up leaving to live with my dad. My mom and dad had a messy divorce, and she hates him. She resents me a lot for doing this when she was the one who raised me and took care of me, and she thinks that I just follow the money I guess. She stole from me because she wants me to struggle. She told my aunt, before that she hopes I end up homeless on the streets and come crawling back to her just so she can turn me away. I didn't think she actually meant it though. I was wondering why she would take this risk, as well. But to me, I don't think my mom really strikes unless she's legally protected. She has this big team of lawyers that are really scary who she used to try to get me in a room with to talk bad about my dad. I'd say she's taking this risk just because she found a legal loophole which is why I feel pretty hopeless about getting my money back. Yes, the bank explicitly stated her name when I asked who withdrew the money. Honestly, I've been wanting to put her on blast for a very long time. She was involved with a huge non-profit and always doing good stuff in the public eye, but I just can't believe she would act like this without me even provoking her. Anyways, it's more about me in general. I don't really know how to work social media well and I'm afraid of it backfiring onto me, like you said. Phew, sorry for the long response. I just wanted to include more details just in case. Update 1 So, I took all of your guys' advice. First thing, I went and recovered my original physical documents from the bank at my dad's house. It's Thanksgiving break right now so I was back in my hometown from school. I also looked at my original statements and saw that all of the accounts only had my name on them. This gave me so much hope that someone had screwed up and I could get my money back. My dad took me to the bank with my cousin for moral support and I spoke to the guy that I had opened an account with a year and a half ago. What he told me made me feel like an idiot. My mom had opened a savings account back in 2011 where her and I were joint owners. Every time I was paid money to my checking, I was depositing it into my savings account. It turns out I had only opened a checking account with that bank and I was the sole owner of that checking account, but the savings. 